Okay, our next topic, we're going to start looking at logical statements, and these are the small building blocks that we use to build up our proofs, logic, mathematics. Okay? So, logical statements. In mathematics, we typically prove big things from small things, and those very, very smallest pieces that we're going to play with are statements. So, mathematics big part of mathematics is proving that statements are true. So we take smaller statements that we know are true and use those to prove bigger, more interesting statements are true. So for example, we would like to prove, and we will prove as more as my first thing for this course, that the square of an even number is itself even. Okay. And we're going to do this by starting from known facts, known true statements, axioms, lemmas, theorems, and we're going to combine those using logic to build new facts. Things like, if we have an even number and we square it, we get an even number. And so we need to introduce these very small pieces, these statements, and these are just mathematical sentences that can carry a truth value. And then later on, once we understand those, we're going to use logic as rules to combine those sentences together to make more interesting things. Okay, so small statements, which are either true or false, put them together using logic. So, a not-so-formal def definition of a statement is a statement is a sentence that is either true or false. And in particular, it has exactly one of those two truth values. It's either true or it is false. It can't be neither and it can't be both. So now, note, like sets, a rigorous definition of statements is actually way too hard for this course. Okay, so we're not going to do that. We just want to get on with things. Okay, if you want to find out more about a rigorous definition of statements, I suggest you go and search engine your way to more information. Also note, as, uh, as a sort of convention, we'll typically use the capital letters P, Q, R, maybe S, to denote statements. Okay, so this will stand in for, uh, as an abstract way of denoting a, a statement. So here's a couple of examples. The number square root of 2 is not a rational number. Okay, this is something we'll actually prove to be true in this course. So this is a statement. It's either true or it's false. And in this case, it's actually true. On the other hand, the number 17 is even. Now, this is a statement, but it's a false statement. We know this is not true because we can't write it as 2 times something else. Okay? So this is an example of a true statement, and this is an example of a false statement. So some more statements. The 100th decimal digit of pi is 7. And every, every, every even integer bigger than 2 is the sum of two primes. Now these statements are actually statements because we can determine their truth value. They're either true or they are false. Now the first one, well, we can get our computer and compute pi to sufficient precision and work out what it is. Okay, so we could just start 3.1415 and so forth and just keep going and going until we get to the hundredth digit and check. Is it 7 or is it not? Okay, easy. The second one is actually not known whether it is true or false. There's a very famous conjecture in mathematics called Goldblatt's conjecture. Now, its truth value is not known, but it must either be true or be false. Okay, so it is actually a statement. Even though we don't know whether it is true or false, we know it must be one of those two. So it is a statement. On the other hand, here's some non-statements. Sentences like, I am tall, and this statement is false, these are not statements because we can't decide their truth value. In particular, for the first one, who's I and what is tall? I will depend on who's reading the statement or who wrote the statement. And tall, well, that can be quite subjective, okay? So if you're a basketball player, tall is quite different from the rest of the population, typically. Okay, so this is difficult, this is ambiguous, it's not well-defined enough for us to decide a truth value. On the other hand, the second one is quite strange, because it, in part because it refers to itself. It can't be true and it can't be false. In particular, if it's true, then it tells you it can't be, and if it's false, then it tells you that it must be true. Okay, so it can't actually be either. So this is a very weird statement in part because it refers back to itself. So we're not going to touch things like this in this course because it's, again, out of scope. We've got to start with simpler things before we can work up to weird things like this, which you could take in, understand in a later course. 
So finally, let's look at open sentences. Now, some sentences contain variables. So for example, if the, if the integer x is a multiple of 6, then it is even. And the integer x is even. Okay, so these are statements, or these are sentences rather, that contain some extra little variable here, x, and we don't know much about x, so we can't necessarily work out if these are true or not. Now, let's look at these things. It actually turns out that this first one is actually true. If we take an integer that is a multiple of 6, then it is even. This is a true statement, so it is actually a statement. On the other hand, the second one, it depends on x still. If x is 5, it's false. If x is 6, it's true. So the truth value depends on this variable x. And because of that, we call it an open sentence. So an open sentence is a sentence whose truth value depends on the variable, or variables, depending on what, how it's written, that it contains. Okay? And we typically denote it by p of x or something similar. And this is quite similar to the notation we use for a function because, well, the truth value, if you like, is a function of that variable. Okay, so that's an open sentence. And that's where we'll leave it for the moment.